stage four, lesson one of the roadmap to success, where you are going to learn how to automate your business to freedom. In this first lesson, we're going to talk about how to make progress with your customers. One of the things that I've discovered over the years um, when I when working with business owners is that most of us have what we need. We've got the email, we've got the TikTok, we've got the social media platforms, we've we've got the stuff that we need in place, but the business isn't working. And this is the, the, the question that so many people come to, the business isn't working, I don't know why it's not working. One of the reasons, one of the biggest reasons actually why the business isn't working is because there is a process that we all go through, right? When we go to a website, we see the website, we're uh, oh look, here here is a website for uh, for Barbies. I know that I'm on a website for Barbies and telling me about Barbie. And then I look around, the next thing that I'm gonna do is look for a Barbie or find the Barbie that I want. I'm gonna click on that Barbie, I'm gonna add it to my cart, I'm gonna check out. Okay, these are, very, these are all very specific steps in the process that I take. And the Barbie website has put signposts in place to tell me where to go, okay? One of the issues that exists in, uh, with many of us in our business is that we have a lot of things, but we don't actually have a path that we've got that we use to guide people from the beginning to end. So when someone comes to our website or sees our social media, they see that, but it's very disjointed in terms of what happens next, where they go next, what they do next. And because we as business owners don't necessarily know that, know where they're going or what they're doing next or haven't decided where we want to send them, it makes us uncomfortable when we are promoting because we lack confidence in what's going to happen next, right? So if you're telling someone, oh my God, I have this great product, go to my website, but you don't know what's going to happen when they go to the website or when they go to the social media or where they, you don't know what will happen when they get there, then it's like there's an added level of anxiety that's just right on top of that where you're like, oh my God, is this going to work? I don't know if it's going to work, right? So the whole point of setting up the Facebook and the various things that we're setting up is so that we can actually create a pathway for your uh, audience to come from being a stranger to being a, to checking out. So like, hi, I'm a stranger. I've just come to your site for the first time. And now I'm checking out and giving you my credit card. The purpose of automation and creating that freedom is to create this seamless path from beginning to end. This is actually the secret weapon that allows you to create progress with individual people but it also is the secret weapon that lets you take a step back from your business, like the day-to-day -day activities of your business, where you're the one who has to funnel people through every single step and help people through every single thing. It allows you to take a step back from that because your systems will do it for you. So you don't even have to hire somebody to do it. It'll just do it for you so that you know when you tell someone, go to manessa.com, you know exactly what's going to happen when they get there. You know the page that they're going to go to. You know what they're going to see. You know what they're going to, where you're guiding them. They may click on something else, but you know where you're guiding them to go and you have confidence in the process that you're taking them through, right? Um, you can customize your communications in a lot of these automated steps, which is great because it creates more trust and more relationship, right? Now, the thing is, is that automation is not just about email. Okay. So a lot of times when people think about automation, they think about email automation, they think about bots, they think about stuff like that. Automation is not, it doesn't have to be that high tech. Automation is really more about a highway. Okay. So I want you to think about yourself driving down a freeway and you've been driving down this freeway for quite some time and you're hungry. Okay, so you're driving down the freeway and you're hungry. Now the transportation department has green signs or blue signs on the side of the road, right? That as you're driving, you look and you see, oh, exit eight, there is a restaurant there, okay? Now your first, your next question is, where is exit eight? Where am I, okay? You're driving, la la la, you see exit seven. Okay, great, exit eight is where there's food, okay? So now you're just gonna keep looking out for exit um, you're going to keep looking out for um, exit uh, exit uh, eight because you're looking for the food, right? Ah, look, there's a signpost. Exit eight's there. Now you're going to take that exit off, okay? The, the Somebody has put signs and arrows to show you where to go. There's a sign telling you what exit is, a sign up there telling you what exit it is, and then you come off, okay? And then usually there's a branch. Which direction do you go in, right? There will be signs that say, food this way. And you're like, ah, I need to take another right for food. You take a right for food. Now. There may be a billboard that you can see. You're like, ah, there it is. I see it down in the distance. I'm going towards it, right? So now you're driving down this road, but you know that the restaurant is over there because the restaurant put a sign outside saying that this is the restaurant. When you walk in, there's a door right in the front that where the sign usually is that gives you the indication, ah, I'm supposed to walk through that, okay? And then you follow the set of steps. Now these, when I say those steps, you're like, yes, why are you breaking this down for me? I've done this a thousand times. It is important to break it down because people have done work on every step of that way to make sure that you are given the signs that you need 
so that you know where to go so you don't get lost on your way to eating because they want you to come to their place to eat. For your business, you have to do the exact same thing, okay? Where you find people is the highway. It's just the freeway running off, okay? And their pain points are what we talked about in stage two. Now we need to put signposts on your page, in your social media with arrows, not literal arrows, but metaphorical arrows that basically will guide them. And some places, by the way, might be literal from space to space to space so that they can get from the highway, which is wherever it is that they start out to, to your checkout, which is the restaurant in this story, without you having to intervene. Because nobody from the restaurant had to call you and tell you how to get to the restaurant in this place, you just follow the signs. That's the same way for your business. Anytime someone has to stop and message you because it's not clear enough on your end, is a place where you are losing your audience, okay? There is a hole in that space. And we're gonna talk about that in a lot of detail as we go through this stage, because that is the most important part of automation is plugging all of your holes, okay? So I want you to really think about this, okay? So this is where automation becomes really critical is why did you start your business, right? When you think about why you started your business, like, are you really good at crocheting? Did you have a, have a, have a thing that you felt like you could impact others with? Um, are you a good teacher, a chef? Are you a boutique owner? What, what did you start your business for initially? What inspired you to do the thing that you do? Not to start a business on its own, like just, oh, I'm gonna start a business because I wanna make money. Great, that's sure. Why did you pick the thing that you picked, right? Now I want you to think about, you know, once you've figured that out, you can pause it and think about it. And then I want you to think about when you first started, what brought the customers in, okay? Chances are it was your passion and enthusiasm for the product that you were starting with, right? So like when I first started my business, I was so excited and so enthusiastic. I'm like, oh my God, both my businesses with the clothes and with this. Oh, so much. I was going to make an impact on people's lives. It was, it was just the greatest thing ever. I was so, I wouldn't shut up about my business because I thought it was so great and we'd make such a big difference and it was so wonderful and so fun, right? And the problem is, is that very quickly that enthusiasm turned into exhaustion because I realized that for me to accept payments, I needed a system. Okay. Then I needed to figure that system out. Then I realized, oh, I need a website. My website isn't working. I need to hire a programmer, which I wasn't expecting to hire a programmer, but the website turned out to be more complicated than I expected. So I had to spend more money on this. Then I was doing social media. I had to figure out my taxes. I dealt with my whole financial situation, which you'll learn more about as uh, we go into stage five. Um, I, oh God, I had to set up my automated emails, my customer communications. Suddenly I was spending all of this time on administrative stuff and stuff behind the computer. I literally was doing nothing that I started my business for. I wasn't selling clothes to anybody, right? And then I wasn't, I wasn't actually able to have, find the time to coach people because I was just constantly doing administrative stuff, which is exactly what almost all business owners who would do it on their own find themselves in after a couple of years. They find that they're spending so much time doing administrative stuff, so much time doing a lot of this extra, you know, uh, get, moving people through the funnel stuff that they don't have time to actually make the money or do the thing that they love doing because they wear all the hats right? You do the paperwork, the spreadsheet, sending an email, the shipping, it's all you. Okay. I really want you to think about how much logistical time that takes. It takes a lot. How often do you start a day where you're like, I'm going to get started. I'm going to have this great vision of what I'm going to do, but then you get stuck in the, 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 the mess of all of the administrative things, the shipping, the emails, the things like that. And then, and then on top of those things, right, where people have already bought stuff and whatnot from you, you also have to be the person to hold people's hands through your entire funnel if it's not put in place, right? Because it's not automated. So like if somebody comes to your site and they're like, where do I find this? How do I buy this? What do I, how do I give you money? There's so many things that, that they may have questions about that are not clear on your website, that it's going to require them to come to you, that now every time someone has to come to you, you lose a sale because for every person that comes to you with that question, you're losing three or four that did not come to you with that question. They just got exhausted, annoyed and left, right? So your problem in your business may not be customer acquisition. You may actually be finding all of the customers. They may all be coming to your page. They may already love you, but they're disappearing and bouncing because your user journey is full of holes. And so they're disappearing. So you think, oh, I need more customers. So you go out chasing and looking for more customers. You bring more customers in because you're already really good at that, but they also fall through the hole, right? So people are just constantly falling through the hole, constantly falling through your holes. So our goal of course, is to plug the holes in your user journey, right? Now, if you think about it, if you're doing logistics and handholding people through the sales, there is not enough time in the day for you to do both of those things and also um, live your life and eat, drink, be healthy, whatever. And um, 
eventually something has to has to sacrifice. So what ends up sacrificing first is usually your health. And then the second thing that sacrifices is usually the things that made you money in the very beginning. And then the thing that you spend almost all your time doing is planning for making money and logistics. So now you're spending a lot of time on logistics and planning for making money, but there's not a lot of time being able to be spent doing the thing that is actually your zone of genius, which is your business, right? We're going to automate as much as we can of this so we can take you out of the equation so we can put all those signposts there and let the systems, images, guideposts, arrows, things like that do that work for you, okay? Now, this step is going to be uncomfortable for you as we go through this stage. I just want you to know it's going to be uncomfortable. And the reason why it's going to be uncomfortable is because I'm going to invite you to let go of doing a lot of things in your business that you feel very comfortable doing because they make you feel like you're working on your business, okay? But it doesn't matter because this is where you came to get rid of the clutter that's accumulated in your business and a lot of the things that you're doing are clutter. It's not just you, we we all accumulate clutter. The difference is, is that lots of people um, who have already been working with me have gone through the deliberate step of looking through their business and identifying the clutter and getting rid of it for the first time in their lives, right? So they had a lot of clutter to get rid of because most of us do not do spring cleanings on our businesses. So if you haven't done a spring cleaning on your business yet, this is the time to do it, okay? So a lot of the things that we work on in our business are pacifiers that no longer have any value for us and we need to get rid of them. So if you're not sure if something is a pacifier for you, if you're like, oh, I don't know if this is a pacifier or not, ask on the wall, right? But most important is don't be afraid to dive into something new and don't be afraid to ask if you're like, listen, I kind of still want to do this, but I'm not sure. Is it a pacifier? Ask, because I will tell you, there are a lot of things that we want to do and continue to do that are pacifiers. There are some things that I hold on to that are pacifiers that I will still allow myself to do because I like doing them. So when I say that something is a pacifier and you're getting rid of it, I just mean you need to know what it is, whether it's helping your business or not, and then you make the decision how you want to use it. You can get rid of it entirely, never do it again, or you can have it be like, all right, this is going to be my 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 treat, my little my sweet treat because I feel good when I'm doing it. Whatever it is, right? That's totally fine, okay? So in our next step, we're going to actually dive deep into the user journey. This is my favorite favorite thing in the entire in all of business. The user journey is my favorite thing. So we're about to jump into the very next thing, which is your user journey. So I don't know where let's take a look.